Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillah rahman rahim. Welcome to another episode in the series Dawa Ilallah as we look at how to use comparative sciences to be effective in calling people to Allah. And what we've done in the series so far is we've looked at a number of the doctrines, or in this last few episodes, at a number of the unbiblical doctrines and ideas that we find Christianity has today. And many of the Christians in the world, in fact, almost every Christian in the world, will claim that his doctrines come from the biblical text. And that later on, when reading through the Bible, this is how the church adopted these beliefs. We've looked at two points already and seen that no, this is not true at all. The idea was in existence long before the biblical text was even written or thought about or was needed to substantiate these beliefs. And the first belief that we looked at was praying or prayer to Jesus, praying to the Prophet Isa, peace be upon him. We said that this was a belief system that existed before the text was written and would have influenced the way the text was written. So if people are claiming that the doctrine is coming from the text, how come this was a practice before the text was written? So many of the critics were saying that well, praying to Jesus is not, there's no harm in it, it's good. No, it's not, because he himself declares in many places in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 to 15, where he says that you must pray to the Father, pray, ask the Father, whatever you seek of the Father. He never says, pray to me or ask me. Pray in his name, he says. So again and again, we see that it was a tradition or was a custom of men because it was something that was external from the biblical narrative that people were doing when they were praying. So the traditions and the teachings of the apostles, that was a tradition and a custom. The people were doing, not what the supposed Word of God is teaching when Christians claim that they got this from the Bible. So we saw that it came at a much later stage. So another tradition that we see that the doctrine existed before the text had written it is the idea of the Trinity. The doctrine was in circulation about a thousand years before somebody thought, you know what, we should have a text to substantiate this belief. And so we only find about a thousand years later, people hunting, looking, trying to find a text. It was when Luther broke away and started a movement, Martin Luther, that we find him hunting, trying to find something to substantiate the belief in the Trinity. So we find Wesley, Calvin, all these people suddenly writing about the Trinity for the first time, having to substantiate their beliefs. Other than that, this idea was in circulation long before the text was referred to. So we find that the biggest problem is that the text itself says that the Bible is not enough. Many people claim, as we're going to look at today, that is the Bible only. You'll have the vast majority of Christians saying, we only accept the biblical. We're not getting our doctrines from anywhere else. We've already shown two of the doctrines came from somewhere else. But the text itself says there are other traditions. We looked at 2 Thessalonians, where it spoke about, you must accept the traditions, whether they come to you orally spoken or they come written. And so this was in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 15 that we looked at last week. So the definition of the Trinity, the very word itself, the most fundamental concept that is known to all Christians itself is not found anywhere in the pages of the Bible. We already know this. Other scholars greater than myself have dealt with this issue. And so I am not even going to bother any further with this. Rather than to sum up just one single verse, in Acts chapter 19, verse 1 and 2, when Paul comes to the people and speaks to them, and he says, did you receive the Holy Spirit? They say, who is the Holy Spirit? Never even heard of it. This is enough for you to know that the Trinity was something that was not established 
It was something that was created doctrine much later. So even the text goes against itself. Even though we know that the idea of the Trinity was instilled in the minds of the people, it was a thousand years later that it only looked for verses and chapters. And in fact, we can find more chapters and verses in the Bible that go against the idea of the Trinity. And Acts chapter 19, verse 1 and 2 are probably the most powerful examples of lack of information of the Trinity or the Holy Spirit being part of the Trinity. So now we're going to move on to the next important issue, the next important doctrine. This doctrine is the doctrine that says that the Bible is the infallible Word of God. Again, we are not interested in showing you all the textual problems. This is the job for Dr. Zakir Naik, Bilal Phillips, all these men who do that. Mine is to look at it from a doctrinal point of view. Did the doctrine come first, and then people try to find verses to prove it? The idea of the Bible being the infallible Word of God is a doctrine, not to be found in the pages of the Bible. The Bible does not claim to be the infallible Word of God. It never says anywhere about itself that this text that you are about to read is the infallible Word of God. It doesn't say that. It doesn't even say these collections of books are what you should consider the infallible Word of God. Nothing. So the notion that people have of interpreting the Bible is a doctrine and not something that you find in the text itself. It's a teaching of those early apostles. It's the teachings of the early Christians. It's the teachings of the bishops and the hierarchy within the establishment of the day. The Bible being a solely infallible book is a notion that is only found externally, not internally. It's not something that we can even consider. All these ideas are actually unbiblical. People might be shocked for me to say that the idea of the Bible being itself unbiblical is an oxymoron. The Bible is unbiblical. It says that it's an unbiblical book because it nowhere claims to be a Bible. It nowhere claims to be infallible. This is church doctrine coming before anything. We still haven't got a verse. There's no verse to this very day that says, I am the Bible and I am infallible like we have with the Quran, which says that. This is the Quran, identifies itself. The Torah identifies itself. The Bible doesn't identify itself because it was never meant to be a collection of writings. So nowhere in Christian scriptures does it say or even imply these ideas of it being a book or infallible or being the words of God itself. So nowhere does it imply these ideas. Nowhere in the Christian scriptures does it teach and you can look anywhere you like where it is the sola, sola, sol, uno, the one, the only book, or even the only idea, the only Renaissance idea of its day. There were many, many ideas in that era that was put together. There were hundreds of other texts that could have been considered. And this idea of the Bible being a scripture all on its own, is a modern invention, had nothing to do with the ancient text. And so nowhere in Christian scriptures do we find this idea being taught. This is an innovation, it's an invention by the early church, and nowhere in Christian scripture does it even give us this idea. So the Bible itself says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, it gives an example. The Bible says many good things about scriptures, many different scriptures, not just specifically the Bible. And nowhere does it make the claim or even imply that the Bible and only the Bible is God's word. So this modern era of interpretation of text and of non-biblical teachings is where we get the idea of the Bible being the only text that is acceptable. We don't find this in early understandings of church. In fact, what we find is that even in some of the parts of the New Testament, it refers to books that we don't have in the New Testament. It talks about when I wrote this, and maybe we don't have this writing. It's not there. So we have references made to books that are not even in the New Testament. 
which gives credence to the idea that the Bible is not completed because there are many pieces missing. So the Christian says the Bible is the infallible word of God, cannot possibly say that when it is still fallible, when it has still got text that has not been added in or we do not find, let alone all the hundreds or thousands of contradictions that we find. But that is not what we're interested in. We're looking at the doctrine, where it came from. So modern Christians have been told that the idea of the Bible being the infallible, completed word of God is a biblical truth, and they never question or they never test or even look at a critical way of whether this is biblical or not. They just accept it as being biblical. So if we look at the biblical truth, if we want to see what the Bible actually says about itself, it doesn't say anything about itself. It's a book that nowhere in it does it identify itself. And the Bible tells us many, many times, in fact, if we look at John chapter 20 and verse 30, and I'll read this to you, I'm going to give you two examples. There are 50, maybe even more, but I'm going to give you just two. But before I give you those two, it's time for us to take a break. Get back from the break. We'll continue, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran that he created the death and the life, the life for the purpose, for the purpose of, testing of testing us. Taqwa and truthfulness, humility and repentance, kindness and gratefulness. Are you prepared for the final exam? Are you ready? Generosity and tenderness give true value to life. To answer the most important exam that you will ever face. face. Dr. Jonathan Cazales. Live your your life, your life purpose on purpose. Learn to utilize every moment of life to make it meaningful and precious in Live Your Life on Purpose. Every Sunday at 5.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 11.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Marriage or divorce? What's Islamic ruling? Nikah. Solution or problem? Heaven or hell? Uh, that is a misconception. You choose. Beauty, wealth, family status, virtue. Decide what you want. Decide your choice. Be sad or be happy. It's your choice. Join Dr. Zakir Naik in Better Half or Bitter Half tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. He faces... He listens... My question is about the beard, about Imam Mahdi. What are the people believing? He answers, So number one is the help of Allah. He satisfies in the light of glorious Quran and authentic Hadith. If Allah helps you believe me, you have to get success. Catch Dr. Zakir. Then we have the next call, please. To get convincing and valid answers, in Dial Dr. Zakir, next on Peace TV. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome back. We are looking at the sciences of how to understand comparative studies. And we're looking specifically at the doctrines, how the doctrines came up before the text that the belief system was already in existence and many, many years, if even maybe even recently, people tried to find a verse to suit it. And most of the times there are no verses to suit it. We're looking now at the claim that the Bible is the infallible word of God and that the Bible should be accepted and that no other text should be accepted. Only the Bible should be accepted. Many, many, the vast majority, 99% of Christians in the world say, the Bible is all we will accept. We're not interested in any other text. But the Bible does not claim this claim. This claim is not to be found anywhere in the Bible. 
that says, you must only follow me and exclude all other texts. It never mentions this. In fact, there's more evidence where it actually says, except other texts, except the traditions. Second Thessalonians, we looked at last time, said, except our old traditions, except other writings. It doesn't talk about itself because there's no word where it identifies itself even in the text where it says, I am the Bible, accept me. This is what acceptable. These are infallible books, nothing like that. So how must we know? These are traditions and doctrines that come from outside of the text. And like I said, there are many verses I can show you to back this up, but I'm only going to show you two so we can move forward. First one is found in John chapter 20 and verse 30. John chapter 20 and verse 30. And it says, and many other signs truly did Jesus do in the presence of his disciples, and they were not written in this text, or as incorrectly interpreted by the New International Version, and were not written in this book. Even if we were to accept that New International is incorrect in translation of the word text to book, that would mean that there were other writings that were around, because they were not written in this book, but in that book. That's what it's implying. That's the only possible way to interpret that verse, that there was another book or other traditions or other texts around. Why haven't we got these? Because it refers to this in John's Gospel, in John chapter 20, verse 30. Not that we even believe in John's Gospel, by the way. But if we have to rely on nothing else but their own text, then there is information that says there were other texts around. The next one is found in John chapter 21, verse 25. John chapter 21, verse 25, where it says, But there are also many other things which Jesus did in their presence. If every one of them were to be written, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Again, giving the idea that there were other texts or could have been other texts as well that would have been written. In fact, this whole Christian idea of the Bible-only theory is not substantiated because there was no Bible itself. The Catholic Bible has more books in it than the Protestant does. The Seventh-day Adventists and the Jehovah Witnesses and the Mormons have extra texts. So the idea of this whole theory of the Bible only is not substantiated anywhere in biblical text. It is a theory, it is an idea, it is a doctrine that Christians hold to that is unbiblical. So again, we find that the third thing, which are fundamentally important things, by the way, first, praying to Jesus, not biblical. Believing this idea of the Bible only, unbiblical. The Trinity, unbiblical. These are doctrines that are fundamentally held by the vast majority, 99%, Maybe only one or two churches don't believe these things. Yet Christians accept them blindly, without question, and they believe that they are biblical in nature, these doctrines. And they're not. Some churches, before you can get baptized in that church, you have to sign a document which has these doctrines in it. Yet these doctrines are not biblical. You are following teachings of a man, his own thoughts, and you're claiming that you're following God. How can you follow a doctrine that is not even found in the text. So when we look at this theory of the Bible only, and you really want to embrace this idea and accept this idea, you need to make sure that there is a text to back it up and there is nothing. And so the whole doctrine that has been created by the church is unbiblical. Not only is the Bible only idea, the idea of the Bible only idea, a tradition of man, but it comes from the modern era. We do not find in the old era that they believed this. The Catholic Church didn't believe this idea that the Bible was by itself. They believed that the teachings of the church were the infallible teachings, remember? They believed that it was not only the Bible that was the infallible word of God, the teachings of the church were the infallible word of God. The Pope's teachings were the infallible word of God. Where do they get this idea from? Second Thessalonians. Other traditions, whether they be oral or writing, accept them. So it's a modern interpretation that says it's only the Bible and nothing else. So your pastors lied to you. Your priests have lied to you. Your bishops have lied to you. Your church has lied to you. 
by saying that the Bible is the only text that is acceptable. It's acceptable to church doctrine. It's not acceptable to the beliefs of Christianity. This is a doctrine, not a text that can be substantiated anywhere in the pages of the Bible. And so the idea of the Bible itself is anti-biblical. It's anti-the Bible because it contradicts the verses that are claimed and contained therein. They claim there are many other books. There are many other writings. There were not enough that this book can contain. So it's against itself, that doctrine. So there are more verses to substantiate against that doctrine than there is a single verse. There is no verse. There's not a single line, a single verse, a single sentence that they can find that claims that the Bible is the Word of God. It's just a doctrine. So there are many things that we have to be cautious of. And in fact, in the Bible it says, test to see if it is of the Word of God or not. It actually says that. In 1 Thessalonians, again, chapter 5, verse 21 to 22. 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 21 to 22, it says, Test everything. Hold on to the good. Avoid every kind of evil. And a doctrine that does not come from the text is every kind of evil. Test it to make sure that it can be substantiated on fact, not fiction. So... We have so far looked at three doctrines that are fundamentally held by Christianity that we find already are not there. So you don't have to get into arguments about big things. You don't have to spend month after month after month arguing a verse in the Bible. All we need to do is look at doctrinal problems and say, where did the doctrine, the doctrine you follow is not from the text. And if there are doctrines you're following, they came way before the text was there. Before the text was even written, as we saw in the belief of praying to Jesus. May Allah be pleased with him. The idea came 100 years, 50 years before the text was written. So we find that much of the teachings and the doctrines that we find in the church today are believed more than the text itself. This is scary. This is very, very terrifying that there are brothers and sisters of other belief systems who are at home, who may be watching this, that are holding on to beliefs that are destructive. In Islam, we believe that any innovation will lead you away from Allah. Anything that you add to this religion will lead you away from truth. Even if it appears to be good, even if it appears to be a good thing, will eventually lead you away from Allah. It will teach you to break your tawheed. If I look at this little bottle here, it's got nice smelling perfume. If I look at this bottle and I believe that if I tie this around my neck, that it is going to, and it's been placed by the Kaaba, when people have gone and gone around and around the Kaaba and I take it and I tie it on a piece of string and I put it around my neck, and I say, well, all those prayers will have influenced this, and it can only bring me good luck in the future. It appears to be good, but what am I doing? I am putting this in front of Allah, and I'm saying, this is where I'm putting my trust. This thing, this inanimate, stupid object, is somehow going to solve my mysteries and problems in life. So you've broken your shahada, and you've committed the greatest evil. You have associated a partner not a human, it's just an object, but you've associated a partner with Allah, and you have broken your shahada. You have turned away from the creator of the universe, and you are in great danger. The only option is to take that thing off your neck and never do that again, and turn to Allah and submit to Allah and take your shahada again, and say, Allah, forgive me for associating partners, and perhaps... And this is how dangerous this is. Perhaps he will forgive you. Because associating partners with Allah consciously, if you're not a Muslim and you associate partners, no problem. Your sin will be forgiven. Because you had no idea. But if you're a Muslim and you knew it, and you did it, there is great, great danger for you. Terrible danger. So you need to spend many, many hours begging and pleading for forgiveness for that thing because you have 
knowingly associated a partner after knowing the truth. So it might seem harmless, but is destructive. This is what doctrines do. This is what happens when you take a church doctrine and you believe it over your so-called book of God. We encourage you at home to join us again as we go through this issue on how to talk to people and explain to people the errors that we find in church doctrine. So for me, Arib Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.